Hello, I'm Jane Rylands and this is the message for Wednesday the 24th of February. One of the reasons that the Bible still, still feels relevant to us today, even though its most recent writings are almost 2,000 years old, is that it's a book about God's relationship with humanity. And the prime way of describing that relationship is by story. And most of the players in that story are humans. But although the people in the story change, the highs and lows of life haven't changed much, and nor has the way that people deal with them, which is often not as well as God probably hoped. There are a couple of examples from the set readings for this week. The Old Testament reading for today is the third chapter of Jonah. It's the success part of Jonah's story. He's been spat out by the whale, vomited in the words of the NIV, and he walks into Nineveh. It says he proclaimed, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the message went viral and was believed. All the people and all the animals of Nineveh put on sackcloths and stopped eating and drinking as a sign of repentance and cried to God. And God saw what they did and called off the punishment he had planned. But there's a fourth chapter which we rarely hear and it's super dramatic Jonah in a right grump with God. I knew that's what you'd do. That's why I ran off in the first place. You're just too good. I'd rather be dead. He sets himself up outside the city to watch what happens and makes a bit of a tent for himself. And so God gets some sort of vine plant to quickly grow and create shade over him, which pleases Jonah no end. The next day, however, God introduces a worm to the plant, which destroys it as quickly as it grew, with the result that Jonah gets sunstroke. Again, Jonah says, I'd rather be dead. God is surprisingly gentle with Jonah. You're so upset about a short-lived plant which you didn't even grow. Should I not be upset about the thousands of people and animals in Nineveh? The psalm for Sunday just gone is the first part of Psalm 25, said to be a psalm of David. You'll have it in the pew sheet. It's a wonderful prayer. It asks God for guidance and leadership and mercy. I particularly love the appeal in verse 7. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. In verse 9, the writer shows that he knows that God's way includes humility. But I can't help feeling that the writer lets himself down a little by the petulance of verse 19. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. It feels like a prayer for grace for me, poor soul that I am. Yet don't be doing that for those that hate me, God. They need punishing. How often have we been a Jonah or a David? And yet God has still dealt with us graciously. Only God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is perfect. We are drawn to desire this perfection in ourselves. Made as we are told in the image of God, it seems natural that we would de desire that. The stories of the Bible show us that God sticks with us, even though we fail as much as we succeed. Glory to God in the highest. Amen.